Hey, what's up, gang, and welcome back to another Art at Home. Uh, we are moving on from drawing animals, and we are moving to drawing people. So, for today's exercise, um, we are trying to be, we're, we're trying to advance and progress and grow and move forward, and we are going to stop using stick figures. Typical stick figure when you draw a person, circle head line for the body of course we have lines for the arms and lines for the feet now here's the problem with drawing uh, these types of uh, figures now you're missing some key things that people actually have which are the hips and the shoulders and because we don't have those things we can't make ourselves a proportionate uh, human figure you're gonna need these two things the hips and shoulders are very important because it gives our body mass. When you have a typical stick figure body, there's nothing you can do with this. Um, so I'm going to show you guys how to take this, take it a step forward. You're going to move from drawing something like this to something more of lines of something that looks more realistic. Let's go ahead and grab paper, eraser, and a pencil so that we can begin our art. Now I know I said that um, stick figures, uh, we want to move away from them, but in order for us to start our form, a good place to start is actually with the structure of the body, which is going to be the bones, and what's great is you guys already do this, so we can add to it, and it's going to be starting with a stick figure. So we want to start with our head shape. We're going to try and uh, stay away from the circular head shape, which is typical of a stick figure and we're going to move more towards an egg uh, the egg rounded part being on the top for the top of the skull and as you come down to the chin that's going to be where the point of the egg is going to be okay so let's when we draw our stick figures let's start drawing more ovular shapes rather than having those typical circle shapes okay and you know what I'm going to go ahead and draw on this side a typical stick figure to show you how this isn't really going to help us. Okay, so we have a circle for a head, which is your typical stick. All right, so now the next line we wanna draw is going to be the neck as well as the spine. And depending how long your torso is, that's how long this line is gonna be. And then we have the line for our stick figure. That yeah, looks the same. And I have the same thing going on here. Now here's where it differs. We're going to give our stick figure a neck. And we're going to put a crossbar under the neck. That's to make a T. And this is going to tell us that these are where the shoulders are. Now, for people, the shoulders actually stick out further than their heads. And I know a lot of you guys like to draw pictures where the shoulders are in, right underneath the head. And the shoulders are really, really small. But that's not how people work. People actually have, have a girth to them. They have this width that extends their shoulders out past the size of their heads. So on a typical stick figure, we, we don't get that. We don't have shoulders. Because you guys usually draw your stick figures with maybe one hand in the air. We'll, we'll just make it like, like it's being dynamic. And we'll put one hand out to the side. We're pretending that this stick figure is like waving. Hello. All right. So let's move lower on the body. We're going from the neck to the shoulders down to the hips. The hips is also going to need another cross. Because in this stick figure here, we're actually drawing ourselves our skeletal structure, whereas this stick figure is just a very abstract look at the, f at the human form. Something that you can identify as being human because there's a round circle up top being a head, a neck, arms, a body, and then legs, right? But for what we want, our purpose for today is we want to actually draw a real person or what a real person should look like, which means that they're going to need hips, okay? Um, alright, so for the arms, 
What I like to do is I like to put circles on the ends of my hips and my shoulders. And the reason why I do that is because it tells me that there's a joint there. Something that can move forward, back, side to side, and all the way around. So with that circle there, it kind of gives me an information that tells me that this line or this section will turn or can turn. Where typically you wouldn't be able to turn in the middle of your forearm because we have these two bones that stretch up. I mean, we can twist our arm because we have the radius and the and the um, and the humerus. I'm sorry, the radius and the ulna are working together like this, and as it twists, it moves around like that. Okay, so we have two bones inside our arm here that help that motion. So we're going to start up with the upper arm, and we're going to stick our upper arm coming out of the shoulder, and this one we're going to put alongside our body. Right. So the elbow is usually located um, when you have your arm resting right below the chest, and if my chest is here, I want to make sure that my elbows drop below that, and then I'm just going to put another couple of circles to demonstrate that our elbow also has a bend to it. And then coming off of my elbows, we're gonna have the forearms, like I was telling you before. And I like to put a little scratchy line at the end where the wrists are to tell us that that's where the hands is. The hands I usually put last anyway. Okay, so let's move to the stick figure. Um, these are the arms, it's, it's done already, so. Let's move on to back to our our skeletal structure here. We have the hips. From the hips come our uh, thigh or our femur bone, which is the longest bone in our body. And that's going to stretch down straight on both sides because our person is going to just be standing. Okay, So our skeletal structure is standing straight. I'm going to put a couple of circles again to tell me where my knees are. And then after the knees, we have the lower leg. And after your lower leg, I'm just gonna put a couple of lines to tell me where the feet are planted onto the floor or whatever surface it's standing on. As for the uh, stick figure, typical stick figure, the lines usually just stick out like that. And the stick figure would be finished at this point. Most times, you guys will just put a smiley face, maybe some hair, to tell us that, you know, this person has hair. But that's pretty much the extent of a stick, uh, stick figure, right? Alright, so for the form itself, as we are drawing our forms, this is good to know. You guys drawing stick figures, that's fine. But let's move over to the next level. Let us advance to something more like this, alright? So this would be a typical um, structure for the bones. This is where all the, the circles are where all the joints are. The lines are where the hands and feet are. And this line that comes down here in the neck and the spine, that is flexible as well because our spine is made up of many smaller bones that can actually tilt and wiggle because there's a small squishy um, uh, flesh in between each vertebrae that gives us the ability to uh, to move so that our backs can actually um, uh, twist and turn as well as bend to it forward back left and right and um, these stacked bones help us to curve so this if you're gonna draw a person and you want them to you want their body to curve a certain way the spine is pretty much the only bone inside your stick figure that you can actually curve. All right. So if you draw a, a stick figure with a curved line coming from the neck down to the hips, that would be acceptable only because the bones that are inside that part of the body are a bunch of smaller ones stacked on each other so that you can, like a snake, wiggle your spine. Okay. So this is a generic um, skeleton. Great. 
Uh, well, now we're gonna add some flesh to it. Now, what I what I like to tell the older students, sixth graders and fifth graders, when we do form, is I tell them, why don't it just easier? Why don't you just put a rectangle from the shoulders down to the bottom of the rib cage? So if we put a rectangle here, and then the hips, I usually tell them use a circle, just draw a circle, and that can be your hips. So in order to do this really quick, this uh, particular um, method, all you would do is draw the head as an oval, draw a rectangle for the chest, and then draw a circle for the hips, and then a line for your spine. And that's pretty much it. That's how you start. After that, you can have your arms bend and twist and turn any way you can, any way you can get them at each um, at each joint. Whether you want the person standing, jumping, flying, falling, um, running, swimming, whatever action pose you want to put your your figure in, great. Let's start off with these three shapes, and you're good. You have an oval, a rectangle, and a circle. The circle not being the head, but being the hips. And this is a great start for you. Then you can put your your shoulders coming off. You can have arms. And from your hips, you can have legs. Okay. So getting back to this guy. We want to go ahead and add some flesh to our body because this skeletal structure is not a complete form. So let's go ahead and um, use the oval to cover up parts of our body. And we're going to start from the shoulder and going down to the elbow using a nice big oval going around both the shoulder and the elbow yeah? so on both sides we're gonna put a oval like a rubber band and this is gonna be your muscle your upper arm muscle yeah bicep tricep uh, shoulder whatnot and then when you come down to the forearm we're gonna draw another oval that's gonna be smaller because typically that's how it is yeah your upper arm is bigger than your lower arm than your forearm so we're going to make a smaller oval, both in length and width. And that's going to go around the elbow as well as the wrist, just like that. Now we're going to move over to the legs, the thighs, and the calf area, calf shin. So we're going to draw bigger ovals for the legs because our legs are much more massive than our arms. And they are going to go around the hip, as well as the knee, like that. And then you're going to wrap an oval around the ankle, as well as the knee, coming up. And that is going to give us our shin and our calf area, just like that. You can see how the form is finally coming together, yeah? Pretty cool. Alright, so now... Um, we are going to draw the shoulders, neck area. And what we're going to do is we're just going to draw a diagonal line coming from our shoulders, going up towards the center of our uh, spine. So we're just going to draw a line going up diagonally and then connecting to both shoulders like that. And then we're also going to need a neck because our neck is not super skinny. So coming out from the chin, well not the chin, but the, um, the jawline, where the egg starts to taper in, that's going to be the neck. Okay, so if you look at a typical head, the neck <coughs> comes out from the, the jaw, not from the chin. The stick man has his neck coming out from his chin. So that already is... There's no hope for that guy. He's not going to be able to eat anything except for Simon. All right, so let's go down to the to the um, rib cage, the chest area, and then the hips. In order to make that one solid piece for the torso, we're just going to connect the line from the side going down, just like that. Okay. Uh, there's also a a small muscle that sticks out from your back and that's a little triangle and what that's going to do is it's going to come out from your ribs and it's going to go up towards your shoulder okay those uh 
those are the muscles on our back when you lift up your arms and drop your arms down you can you can usually see that muscle and that helps us to uh, pull our arms forward like if you're rowing a boat okay so now that we have all of our muscles in place uh, our body is almost finished now let's look at this stick figure here what if we were to add the same kinds of shapes to this figure well let's try it out so we go from the shoulder add an oval to the wrist because there's no elbows shoulders to the wrist um, hips to the leg hips to the leg and then we connect the shoulder to the hips and then we drop down a line on either side of our neck so now this guy is no longer a stick figure he actually has some flesh on him so this is kind of cool looks better than if you just had the stick figure okay so um the next step is we're going to use our eraser and what we're going to do is we're going to combine all of these uh shapes all of these ovals that we just drew we're going to combine them all together into one uh, one form so erasing the entire skeletal structure and all those overlapping ovular shapes we're just going to go ahead and take them out get rid of the spine all this information we don't need it anymore because we've already constructed our body human body okay there we have a form let's take our eraser and erase the stick line that's inside our stick person And we can see how using the stick figure that we typically draw on a daily basis uh, doesn't work for a rep realistic representation of a human body. Because now we've got this really strange um, otter looking like creature uh, with this circular head. So if you were to see a form walking through your front door and it looked like this you would say that it looked human but if you see something walking in that looked like that come floating into your front door you would be like okay that's really strange okay so here's some points okay don't use a circle for the head use an egg shape use an oval shape um, don't draw stick figures the bodies with the legs and the arms sticking directly out from the spine and neck area because then you're not going to have a wide enough body to create shoulders and hips also, stick arms and stick legs don't have any joints. And you're going to need those joints if you want to actually look like a real person waving high. Okay, so let's figure finish up this, this figure here. Now, in order to do the feet, we'll start by the feet because that's pretty easy. Um, I usually say use a triangular shape, right? And the triangular shape is going to jut out from the ankle. And it's going to stick out to the side of your figure on both sides okay just like that the hands we're going to use squares because our palm is a soft square it's not necessarily a circle it's not a triangle but it's roughly like a square so i'm just going to go ahead and put a square connected to my wrist and if you wanted to make the hand, instead of looking forward at the hand like this is going to be, you want to do the side. Um, this is also kind of rectangular in shape. So if you wanted to make one hand sideways, we'll use the left hand on our figure, which is our right. We can go ahead and put a rectangle. And this is telling us that the hand is not um, flat, but it's actually to the side. Okay. All right. <clears throat> So in order to do the fingers, our fingers is, are just a bunch of bones that are connected and they can bend. Um, typically it's just a stick, like a, like a hot dog or sausage or something. I have sausage. But um, we have five of them and they're all differing in sizes. We have a small pinky, we have a longer middle finger, and then we have a wider thumb. The thumb only bends in two places and that's at the base where the palm is and the knuckle 
in the middle. Uh, our fingers, on the other hand, we have a few bands, one, uh, one, two, and then three. So you have to remember those, okay? When you draw hands, you know that your thumb has two bands and your fingers have three. But there are also tiny bones inside your palm that also can squeeze and can sh uh, smash down, you know, bend, twist, and grip. And these tiny bones are very, very um, versatile. Yeah, you can squeeze your hand tighter, you can make your hand wider. So um, let's only worry about the square and the rectangle here, covering the shapes of our um, of our smaller bones in our hand, or inside our palm. And let's make some longer ovals for our fingers. Okay, starting with our thumb, the way the thumb sticks out like that. I'm just going to go ahead and coming from the base of my wrist, my palm, I'm going to put a oval sticking out diagonally down to represent my thumb. And then my pointer finger comes out of there, drawing another slender oval. My middle finger, typically longer than my pointer finger. And remember, these are all very generic um, ideas of how to draw the body. Everyone's body is different. Some people are taller in the torso and shorter on the legs. Some people have really long legs and very short torsos. So this is a very generic look at how to draw a figure. But I mean, this is going to beat this. These these uh, generic drawings are going to beat these out of the water. Once you start getting comfortable learning the different shapes and, and uh, don't use this as an end-all information of how to draw people. Because when you want to draw a specific person or a typical person that you see every day and you want to draw them, you're going to have to modify some of these uh, shapes and sizes, these proportions, to make it match that person. So if they have longer legs, extend the legs. If they have a shorter torso, make the torso short, uh, smaller. Okay, if they have really long arms that stretch past towards their knees, put those. But in a generic setting, most hands will end by the thigh, mid-thigh. So we're gonna go ahead and add ring finger, and of course the smallest finger, which is the pinky, is gonna be there. Sideways hand. So when your hand is flat like this, you can see all your fingers. But when you turn your head sideways, now you've got some overlap. You have your pointer finger, which is blocking a majority of your middle finger, which is definitely blocking most of your ring finger, and you can't even see the pinky. Unless you wanna fan out your fingers like this, you're not gonna be able to see all of them. Okay, so what I'm going to do is here, let's start with the thumb. Notice that the thumb is sticking off a bit from the hand. I mean, if you want to pull your hand back like that into an uncomfortable um, pose, that's possible. But typically when you rest your hand, your thumb kind of juts out and there's this bump here, this part here that turns in. So what we're going to do is we're just from the base of our wrist again, we're just going to go ahead and draw and draw our thumb sticking out from the rectangle good enough uh, for the pointer finger and the middle finger we can go ahead and put the pointer finger and then put a middle finger behind it like that and then if you want you can end it there if you can't see something don't draw it there's no point in drawing something that you can't see because you're just wasting your time. Not unless you're using it for um, uh, purposes of trying to figure out where a continuation of a body part is supposed to go. Like say you're putting your arm around this guy here and you want to make sure that your arm is not super long or it's super deformed or it's not going in by his neck and coming down by his waist. Um, you can draw those informations and then erase them behind the figure that you're drawing to overlap. But um, for the most part, when it comes to like fingers and stuff, you don't really have to technically draw them, especially since there's such small details. Now, if you zoom into the hand and, and your point of your picture is just drawing the hand, then I suggest drawing each finger even though it's overlapped. But when it's something like this and it's further away, it, the information is, is really not going to uh, matter very much because it's such a small detail. Okay. So let's see. Let's add some fingers to this guy.
Let's add some feet. Triangles. All right. So for the feet, um, the reason why I say triangles is up here in this corner here. If I draw draw triangles, whenever I ask the question in class for the older grades, you guys know this. I ask, so what shape do you think the feet are? And most times you say, oh, they're ovals. And I'm like, no, they're actually triangles. Now, if you look at your feet and you, and you stand in front of a mirror, you're going to notice that you have your ankle, right? You have your ankle, and you're going to notice that on the inside of your step, you have your big toe. And you can see your toe now. And then all of a sudden, you have this kind of slope that comes down to your pinky toe. So after you draw your this big circle on the front of I mean on the base of your of your triangle where the square part of the triangle is from here you can start drawing your other toes which are just going to be like circular shapes So that's typical of the triangle shape right there when you draw a foot facing forward. Now if I use my eraser to get rid of the shape that I drew originally, it'll be easier for you guys to understand or see why it is I use the triangle to draw the feet. There, see that? So now we have a foot. And behind where the... Uh, triangle was resting we can put a small bump to tell us that's the heel that's in the back of the foot and it's resting on the floor okay all right so now I'm going to show you how to use a triangle for a foot instead of facing forward facing to the side okay so once again we have the ankle just like that and the foot comes down gradually and right at the tip of the triangle, you're gonna put a bump, and then you're gonna put a circle for the toe. And then under that toe, you're gonna to put a small extension, and that's this part here on the toe here, yeah? And then when it attaches to the foot, there's another bump for the ball of the foot. And then you have your arch that comes up and down. And then finally you have the heel, which is rounded. And then the back of the ankle comes down where the Achilles tendon would be. And once again, we use a triangle to draw the foot. Not, a, not an oval, not a square, a triangle. It gives us the appropriate angles that we need to draw out the foot. Okay, so let's go ahead and erase these lines. So you can get a better idea of what the foot's supposed to look like. Okay. Even the ankle can be used as a bone going up the leg. We do have some textures on the foot like nails. And remember that the um, big toe usually blocks the smaller toes so you don't have to draw like all of the toes. Just like all the fingers here you don't have to draw them all. But you guys can see how the feet translate from that triangular uh, shape onto the bottom of your um, your figure okay so that's how we draw the feet all right we're not done yet we have the flesh on top of our bones okay the next step is we got to put some clothes on this guy all right so let's put some clothes and how do I do clothes well if I'm doing skin tight clothes like a long sleeve shirt that's like fitted to your body and then like um, uh, what are they called I can't remember the name of them, but um, tight-fitting clothes. Uh, you don't have to do very much to make tight-fitting clothes work on this form. This is kind of like how comic book uh, artists draw clothes on top of their figures. They draw a muscular figure inside a dynamic pose, and they just draw 
textures and lines to make it look like they're wearing something but in actuality it's just the form all by itself just with texture and line there's, there's no um, cloth or any type of things like that on the body so I don't want to say it's cheating but I know it's so that it can f it actually shows off the human form because that's what a lot of artists like to do they like to show off so um I'm going to show you guys how to put some baggy clothes on here so it doesn't look like it's a superhero. All right, so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some short clothes on the left and I'm going to put longer clothes on the right. So let's go with that. The neck, we typically have a um, rounded neck hole for on your t-shirts. But um, like I said, shoot, see I've already messed up. We're going to put the shorter clothes on the left and the longer clothes on the right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the tight uh, neck hole for the right side here and then on the left side. So don't don't really copy this, just kind of get the understanding that there's a difference, yeah? And then we're going to go ahead and put a lower, looser hole for the neck down the body on this side, okay? Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to put like a tank top here and then I'm going to put a t-shirt here, okay? All right. So for the t-shirt, it's probably going to end at the mid upper arm. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a line going across my bicep area. And depending on how long your sleeve is going to be, you can make your sleeve all the way down to your wrist if you want. That's totally up to you. Okay. But I'm also going to add a small triangle coming off the side of the arm. And that's going to give it the flap from the um, how typical shirts fall off your arms. It has this flap that extends out. So adding that flap and putting a semi-oval that connects it back to the arm gives it the illusion like it's a three-dimensional shirt, okay? So there we go. There's our long sleeve. And for our short sleeve, what I'm just gonna do is I'm gonna bring um, the line of my shirt, I'm gonna bring it down the shoulder slightly, and then I'm gonna draw a line that's curved going down to under the underarm of my figure. Okay. And that line is going to go down to the edge of your figure and it's going to come rounded and back up, going behind that triangle we drew for the muscle that comes up to the underarm. Just like that. Well, so far, so good. So we have a shirt, uh, short shirt and a longer shirt. All right, so on the left side, we're going to do shorts, and on the right side, we'll do pants. So let's put the pants cutting across the waist area, a little lower than the waist. Okay, so we're going to put a line. Um, what I'm going to do is put a little uh, parentheses line right next to the line that I drew for the waist. And this little parentheses line is gonna make it look like the shirt is um, is kind of crumpled. So it looks like it's getting a little baggy where it's tucked into the short uh, the pants. And you can continue these um, rounded lines to give the illusion. See this line the way it's coming up and into the stomach to give the illusion like it, the shirt is getting baggy right around the waist where the pants are. Okay, but on the left side, I'm just gonna leave it like that because I'm gonna change this a little bit. So I'm gonna have the right side tucked in and I'm gonna have the left side um, untucked. It's gonna be hanging, all right? Cool. Okay, so let's continue with the pants. The pants usually have a button on the top. So I'm just gonna go and draw a half circle because going down the middle, you won't be able to see the rest of the circle on the baggy side. And then if you want, you can put belt loops, which are just curved rectangles on top of the waist of your, your pants. And then you can draw a line connecting those belt loops to make the belt. Then you can go ahead and draw a rectangle in the middle, covering over the button. 
to give the illusion that there is a belt. Okay. Alright. What you can do over here um, towards the hip and thigh area is you can actually draw a rounded line. sticking out a little bit from the leg and what I like to use that as is the um, pocket where you can put your hand inside the pocket or whatever your keys, wallet, phone, whatever you need. So we're already adding additional um, uh, shape and form to the clothing because we know that the clothing sticks out further than our, than our flesh. All right, so the pants come down the leg and on the inside of the leg, it's gonna be a little baggy. So I'm gonna draw an outline around my muscle, my thigh muscle. And I'm gonna go ahead and erase the leg that's creating the muscular form inside the pants because now my pants are actually hiding those details. Okay, so that comes in towards here and then it continues down until it reaches the bottom where the shoes should be. And then I'm gonna draw this curve line here that connects both sides. And now I'm gonna erase all the muscles and bones and everything on the inside of my pants because my pants are hiding that information. On this wrist, if you want, you can draw a rectangle, and on the top of the rectangle, you can draw an oval to make it look like the person is wearing a watch. Just like that. Now, it kind of looks like this guy's wearing gloves, so I'm just going to go ahead and erase the lines that are connecting the fingers and the thumb to the rest of the hand, so that now it looks like it's just a hand. Okay. All right, looks good. Now on the left side, like I was telling you earlier, we're gonna make it shorter. So I am going to make a baggy shorts that's gonna end at the knee. So right at the knee, I'm gonna draw a line going across. I'm gonna draw this triangle sticking out from the leg and it's gonna come up back towards the inner thigh and now we have all this information on the inside of the shorts that need to go away okay and like I was saying before I'm gonna extend this uh, shirt this upper garment to go past and down which means I have to get rid of the line going across the waist. And I want my my um, my shirt to stick out slightly more than my pants. So I'm just gonna draw a thin uh, contour line around my clothing. And you see this line that we originally had for a body, we're just gonna go ahead and erase that because this is a very loose fitting clothing. <laughs> Now I can add some details to this clothes. And this is more of like a jersey. In fact, I'm going to put a number on top of the jersey to make it even look more authentic. All right, so there's not gonna be any clothing on top of his his leg. However, he is wearing shoes and he has socks. So I'm just gonna put a line going across his uh, shin. And I'm gonna put another line going across his shin. And this is gonna be this guy's socks. And then of course the socks have textures with lines going down. So you wouldn't be able to see those socks on top of this guy's uh, pants because it's hidden behind the pants. He could be wearing socks, but you just won't be able to see it. All right, 
Now I'm going to go ahead and add a sweat band on his forearm. That's a little fuzzy sweat band. And I'm going to erase the shapes that are creating the fingers so that the fingers can actually be a part of the rest of the hand. On one side, you can put shoes or you can make them barefoot. You already know how to do feet already, so if you want to make them barefoot. But shoes themselves, you're just going to draw a rounded line going over the pointy part of the, the um, triangle. And then you're going to bring that line coming up following the triangle up to the uh, collar of the pants. And then from here you can erase the triangle that's inside the shoe. <laughs> and if you want you can draw laces. And then we can draw a copied line on the contour of the bottom of the shoe to give it a, the, the base of the shoe. Like that. You do the same on this side. You can make it barefoot, you can give them sandals, whatever you want to put. That's up to you. But, um,. That is basically how you do a person's form. Okay, so getting back to this guy that we started, this is a typical setup. Oval, square, circle. And it's very generic. When you Once you start getting better at drawing people, you're not gonna need this anymore because you're gonna know. And when you look at the certain people that you wanna draw, you're gonna be copying their, their shapes rather than just using this generic template. This is just to get you started, okay? And then from here, you can extend out your limbs any way you want. So if I want this person, let's say, um, running, okay? I kick one arm back, make the elbow, bring the forearm back. Then I kick this arm forward, make the elbow, bring the other arm up. And then the uh, legs are always opposite from the arm. So if the arm is back, this leg is coming forward. So I'm going to put the leg coming forward, the shin coming down, there's a the foot. And then this one, his leg is kicking back. Uh, just like that okay so this would be your running pose I know the legs are supposed to be longer but just for the way we're um, starting to run out of time here I just wanted to do it really quick okay after you get your um, your skeleton or your stick figure completed this is where you start adding the flesh and remember the flesh are the ovals I'm gonna do these really quick so you can see just how fast it is to get a figure drawing going okay and then remember that line that comes from the underarm to the rib cage and then bring the line down to create the body from the rib cage to the hips lines come across diagonally to the neck the neck sticks out from the uh, the jaw and the head remember is an egg shape with the pointy side down and then the hands squares the feet triangles all right and there you have your skeleton now you take your eraser erasing all the lines that you don't need anymore which is basically the skeleton and those three shapes you well two of the shapes that you started with which is the rectangle and the circle we don't want to erase the oval yet because that's our head Erase the skeleton on the inside of the arms. Erase the skeletons on top of the inside of the legs. And there you have your form, which is in the middle of, of running, which is great. Okay, That's what we want. Put the lines back that you erased partially when you were trying to fix up your photo or your drawing. There you go. Add the fingers. If the fingers are clenched together, make it a ball fist. If they're extended out, like they're karate chopping the air, like uh, Tom Cruise, you can add the karate chops. 
Um, yeah, and then, like I said before, add the clothing. You can make them long sleeve, short sleeve, tank top, shorts, pants, uh, bell bottoms, whatever you want. Okay? But you dress up your figure the way you want to dress it up. So, other than that, yeah, let's move away from this. Let's use this as a tool to advance forward. And let's not dwell on doing stick people anymore because that's not going to work. Okay? Let's move towards something that's a little bit more. Um, proportionate and realistic to what a person looks like. Uh, one small uh, suggestion, if you guys need like uh, a tool to help you draw uh, figures or forms, uh, some of you might like this because you could probably squeeze something fun out of your parents when you guys go to the store. But they do have these small marionettes that you can use. Um, you can look it up online. Uh, they have these little posable figures that you can use to uh, put in any position that you want. And then you can copy their, their, their uh, position with your skeleton so that you can come up with realistic looking movement. Um, what I was saying about the store now is, <laughs> is if you guys travel to like the toy department, they actually do have figures that um, move and articulate as re real people could. These are very limited. I mean, they're not as as articulate as those, uh, those marionettes, but hey, at least you got yourself a fun little action figure to play with too out of the uh, whole situation. <laughs> But yeah, so these things can po be posed in pretty much any any particular way you want them to be. And you can set them up on your table in front of you. Like if you want a fighting pose, you got your fighting pose. And you set them up in front of you and you can draw it. If you want your figure uh, running. Yeah, this is cool too. It looks like they're running. So you have all these different poses that you can do this thing with these things and it'll help you with your uh, with your art, with your drawing. If you want a person doing a strong man pose, flexing, maybe you want to do an action pose where the person is punching. Yeah, so you have all these different things that you can uh, do with these little figures to help you come up with some ideas to pose and what's great is they don't just have you know guys as action figures you can also grab girls too they have female action figures too um, yeah so I guess it's just preference if you want to draw a dude or if you want to draw a chick it's up to you so that's it for today's uh, drawing uh, tutorial. This is just art at home, figure drawing. Tomorrow, when you come back, we're going to be doing heads, actual faces. So yeah, it looks creepy. It looks like a ghost man or a slender man kind of just standing here. But um, yeah, uh, we'll be doing the faces tomorrow. Okay, see you next time.